Hello, this is Joy. Today, I'd like to read with you in English a Vietnamese story. The author of this story is pretty much famous in Vietnam uh, and around the world. Fortunately, he's dead in 2021 in Hanoi. He died. This author's name is uh, Nguyen Yo Thiep. So, the story, I don't know if you have heard this story already, you could access to this story, so I'm trying to share, if you learn, if you want to know uh, text, the full story, I will share with you. That's what I, it's all about. I'm trying to make you aware of this author, but, but I, because I think uh, his strength is in the short story. He wrote many short stories, not related with uh, the heroes of Vietnamese history, but rather with the poor, with suffering, with the average man in your country, uh, the agriculture man, the one, the hard-working country man of Vietnamese, Vietnamese uh, late 60s, 70s, 80s. Uh, the story title is Kun. Let's get into the story. Kun, Kun, Kun. Uh, it was written, uh, I think, in 19 in those years, in 1980, during, during the during the Doi Moi period, the innovation time, the perestroika of, the perestroika of Vietnamese history. Let's start. Kun. The protagonist of the story is Kun. Let's uh, let's see uh, who is it. Who is he? Kun knew that death was about to claim him. His legs were already cold, and a deep chill was rising through his body. Sorry. When he reached the top of his head, he knew it would be the end, his final parting with life. So, the first, uh, I will comment briefly, and uh, then I will not comment anymore. I will stop commenting, uh, stop the narration. Anyway, from these three, four lines, he's talking, you can see already, he's talking about death, a deep chill, so the quality of the greatness of this author in his raw storyline, in his uh, um, little simple description of raw, crude, sometimes cruel, gruesome life. And in that, he tried to wake you up. It's a call for waking up from your feelings, from your emotion. He might, you might feel he's heartless. But actually, in that, uh, by by using this uh, this subtle style, he tried to make you understand the greatness of poor men, of simple people living in your country. And I think uh, the great power of this, the greatness of this author, is in his short, in his synthesis, in his sum up ability to sum up value, characters, plot in a few lines. So that's why I'm, I'm reading for you a very short story, but it's a very quality story one. His ability to sum up uh, Vietnamese culture in few lines is incredible for me. I've just been reading four stories. This is the fourth story I've, reading, uh, I've been reading and I finished to read last night. And I think it touched my heart. I hope it will touch your heart, it will move you. And uh, I, I tell you, I, I try to raise awareness about this author. I hope you can discover more about Vietnamese literature, more about your history and more about yourself. So, new uh, Kun, he just was feeling that. So, at the beginning of this story, he's already dying. The, our protagonist is about to die. So, it's like he's starting from the ending of the story to go back to the beginning. He's already weak and uh, death, basically. Let's see. Uh, Kun knew that, I repeat, I start again. Kun knew that death was about to claim him. His legs were already cold, and a deep chill was rising through his body. When he reached the top of his head, he knew it would be the end. His final parting, parting with life. Kun opened his mouth. His thirst was so great he could feel his throat shrivel, shrivel, it was dry. He had an enveloping bodily sense that his life was being cornered and crashed. He knew he could not escape this time. Death was upon him. He stuck out an invisible tongue, and black as night slowly licked Kun's eyes closed. The 
The death, look at this metaphor, the death was licking his tongue and closing his eyes, like it was uh, is about to kill him by closing his eyes. The eyes so are the source of his life. Okay, let's stop comments. More than 10 years before, Kuhn was found in a drain pipe that had been sunk near the stream on the outskirts of the city. The stream was a pitch black runoff of waste water. I can see in iPhone as well these kind of pipes. It was full of rubbish and supported patches of dust covered water yasins. Yasins are flowers, you know. The broken cement drain pipe was laid across a small dirt road. Not dirty, dirt road. So that the wind, I think the translation is and bridge is perfect. So that the wind blew into it from both the stream on one side from the stream and the fields on the other side. Kuhn lay in a pile of stinking rags and was purple with cold. And if you are wondering why he did not die there and then, it was certainly because of old Ha, an old man called Ha. Old Ha was a beggar at the market. It is not clear why he was groping around the drain on that day, but as he stood on the road, he heard the sound of crying. It was a baby, so this cone, right? It seems to come from under, under the ground, as though it was swelling up from hell. The old man shuddered. The afternoon, the afternoon, fading into evening as the last rays of the setting sun illuminated the creamy clouds on the horizon and swept forbidding streaks of wintry light across the face of the earth. Look at this description of the sunset. Nothing to say, nothing to add. The northern wind was howling. That's the ability of a good writer, of a great writer, to let you, to let you touch the situation, the place, the time, in just a few lines. And this descriptive, yes, it's enough descriptive, is one of the greatest description of Vietnamese uh, sunset? It might be, you have to tell me. Please share and comment down below this story. The northern wind was howling around the low stalls and deserted marketplace. This was the right time of day for demons. And it was a kind of landscape in which ghosts could easily appear. Old Ha had lived mo almost all his life without fearing people, who only inspired love or hate in him. What he feared was inhuman, not human. The old man was limp with fear. The wailing was certainly real. He pricked up his ears. He pricked up his ears and listened. It was the sound of a young child crying. <coughs> There's a cat, sorry. Without knowing what he was doing, he ran stumbling down to the edge of the river. Still gripped by the sound of the crying, he looked towards the road and there he saw a child lying in the drain pipe. Hoha came gradually to his senses when he realized it was not a ghost at all. With his soul back in his possession, he realized how fortunate he was that the demons had lost an opportunity to snatch it. He crawled back up to the drain pipe, stuck his head inside and pulled, uh, pulled out a small child. His arm and legs were freezing cold. The old, the old man picked up the child in his arms and carried it back to his shelter in the marketplace. He called the child Kun, which was a name people often gave to puppy dogs. Jeez, the reality is so real, so raw. This was because the child had really not developed into a human being. It was strangely deformed with an enormous hydrocephalic head and soft, seemingly boneless limb, limbs. Basically, he was a disabled cripple. This kid, he was a disabled child. This meant that he couldn't stand upright, but fell over and lay flat on the ground. However, the extraordinary thing was that Kuhn had an unusually beautiful face. 
Kun lived with the old man and did not perish because he possessed two odd powers. Two odd powers. One of these was his, in his eyes, for they aroused fear in everyone around him. If people pass Kun without throwing a coin, without flipping a coin in the torn hat, on the ground beside him, they did not feel at ease. This is the first power, his eyes. He had a beautiful face. In, uh, in my country, we say that the, face is given, uh, the beauty of the face is given by God, and we should cherish and respect the beauty as natural gift. I think also in your culture, you can say that. But this child, aside from the face, he had a deformed body. So he had a gift and also had a sin in his body. I think also the God gave was, uh, it was mysterious uh, when he gave birth to this boy because his face was so, so beautiful, but his body was a uh, cripple, a disabled, maybe disgusting to see for everybody. So there is this paradox in this story, in this character, this, uh, this is the main character, he's a protagonist. His face is beautiful, his eyes are powerful, but his body is of a disabled, cripple, a girl, um, ugly, ugly body. Mm. Very, very interesting, the choice, this protagonist. It's common, you, you, it's common not, no, it's not common, it's unusual, that's an unusual character, but uh, let's see how develops the story. The second of Kun's power was his ability to bear extreme suffering. So he was strong, this boy. He could bear anger and cold with such indifference that it seems his body was made of some indestructible material. Oh Ha, the man who is trying to take care of him, who took him back to his market, took a liking to, a, the, to this deformed child. With Kun, he could more easily make money from begging, and he carried this child everywhere. At the Fu Zai, at Fu Zai festival alone, he made as much as he has made in several years of begging by himself. His way of working was very, very simple. He would leave Kun, he would leave the baby lying on his back, with his battered hat beside him in the middle of a crowd of people. That was all there was to it. Kun would squirm around, and his eyes would do the work. Hey, sir, madam, you are human beings. Think of someone like me who is not yet a human, like you. Ho Ha, who would be hiding somewhere nearby, would appear when the hat was full of money, gather it up, and leave. Sometimes the old man slipped Kuhn a few crumbs of corn, a few crumbs of corn, the way people feed chickens, they are, ta they are taking to the market. Oha regarded Kuhn as a son, as his own son. Naturally, he didn't pay much attention to the boy. He was busy, just as people with other profession are always occupied. Beggars have plenty to do it also. In old Ha's world, the fate of a cripple didn't count for much. He never felt uneasy about leaving Kun weak with anger or shaking with a fever when he went off drinking or gambling. The old man himself had been as hungry, as ill, as as cold as that many times. In the world of beggars, people use a child for two or three months to attract sympathy. Then, when the child dies, they throw it to the rubbish heap. As though they are discarding a broken basket. There is no difficulty in finding another one. When you are cold and hungry, you don't care about anything. Least of all ethics and human feelings. I stop here because I would like that you reflect, you think about these lines and then if you like uh, you, we can continue the story. So an old man took uh, this boy, this crippled boy home but he didn't care about him much. It was just a mean for him 
to make money and to beg for more coins. Uh, yet, yet, yet the authors say uh, when people, when you are cold and hungry, you don't have ethics. Mm, this is a strong point uh, we can argue about for many, many, many hours because, from my Christian perspective, uh, I don't agree with that. Uh, God says in the Bible that uh, we, we should care more for poor because the poor belong to heaven and the rich will not go, to, who don't have a spiritual heart and who don't do charity and who are not kind, they will not reach heaven, but likely they will go through the whole of the hell, the chest full of hell. But in this case, he says, people who don't have money, who, don't, who are poor, a Vietnamese perspective here says, they have no ethics and human feelings. Okay. We continue next time. Just two two pages, but the story is about five pages. I will uh, I will share with you the next chapters.